Beano block, folks. I'm basically just going to show you that we Mercury's okay. At least if it was on fire, it's not on fire anymore. <clears throat> and uh, it's pretty good. I mean, you can see just on this here alone, the tidy, you can see that it could be get caught on fire, and you will see in some other photos in a second. I'll got to pull up photos, but there's Lovejoy going away in H1, and as you see, it basically the uh, the tail of it goes backwards as it's going away, and it's going up past Jupiter. And I got some other shots. Hang on. And you can see as before that the idea that we've seen Mercury is it's going to uh, it's going up past Venus right now, and we've seen Mercury up here with the supergiants and the Sun's glow, where the idea that it has or and or has caught on fire in the past, maybe recently this week. But anyway, as we just seen in that last shot, it looks like it's cooled off, and it's Iser time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Nice cold iser. So anyway, Mercury's cooled off a little bit, and uh, we've got this here object here that we're very interested in finding out about, and that's probably what we need to keep in concern about, possibly out of the supergiants. Uh, as you see, they won't list it here. You'll have to zoom in on this. These are my pictures. I mean, I'll see if I get time to go to Sechi and blow this up. But that's our object, and this is our asteroid belt. And you will see through the, if you watch the times here, and I even think I've got a 2010 shot that I put in here so we can see some comparison. But as you can see, this asteroid belt moves quite a lot, or it might just be H1, 2, and A, and B gives a different, yeah, it's the B and A gives us different shots. And basically it's mirrors, folks, just like the old commercial on the satellites and the new technology and the TV action and stuff. Satellites have got mirrors, folks. They can reflect the imagery and get better shots. So... There's where we're pretty much sure that Mercury got it, okay, and they got it back in 2010, closer and probably hotter a burn than maybe they got this time. It's hard to tell. We'd have to see a new, fresher shot. I could probably research it. Most of it's there. I'll see if I can find another Mercury shot over 2011, about the same time. So, because that's Mercury there. Mercury in the sun, and then in 2010, okay? But the rest of these shots are recent 2000, and that's done the 2010 shot there. So you can see Venus, and our object that we know that is there now, i.e., our object right there, these objects are from the supergiants. These are the supergiants, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And then the sun is in the supergiants. As you can see, supergiants belt and all these large bigger than the sun objects are going to be even farther back in the supergiants because the supergiants are humongous. Okay, the sun is just getting in there now. So I'll go in and see if we can suck up some of these 2011 just recent on the 19th and the 20th shots. And also you can see your object again. We'll zoom in on that. Cluster up there. Basically I got it on this photo shot up you can see it there and there's Jupiter so looking at the size of it it's not a comet fake us out on size like Lovejoy does in a sense even though Lovejoy's got a big head as it's going and then see there's Lovejoy there also in the photo to the, the corner there and as you see it's going backwards but also the tail on the very end looks like that so it's quite deceptive Lovejoy is okay so we are more than likely still seeing Lovejoy moving away on that shot. Either that or take your pick. Because one of these objects could be hot up by the sun. So it's kind of hard to figure out. And there is uh, something to check out is Comet Ikea Murakami. Check out C210V1. Stellarium has that for the last object that they got sitting up there. What's starting to bleed through, though, is this large object, just about the size of Earth, as you can see right back there, behind Earth. You can see Earth. Earth is, Earth is marked, and you can see the magnet, magnet, magneticism of us, our North and South Pole. You can always see planets because there are poles right here. Magnet 
magnetic, basically, magnetized out there in space, so like Jupiter and everything like that. So you can see this large terahydrons that we have behind, okay? Objects right there, okay? Comet. And it's not Lovejoy, ladies and gentlemen, okay? And this is from right there on the 20th. So let's just zoom in on that. So there's our evil twin, folks. The other side, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody always jokes about it, and it might just be out there. And it's definitely been here before, because you, all you got to do is get up and look at Earth and go back and watch my videos. So, don't believe in Martians or aliens, it's stuff one. Make a museum and have a lot of money. But as you can see, we very much, more than likely, have a friend, folks. And neither one of these are Mars, I mean are the moon, folks. Nothing here is the moon. The moon is very small. If anything, the moon could possibly be that little dark speck right there. Okay, because if anything, the moon ain't even that big. Okay, you see that little dark speck right there to the right of the Earth? So, and this is just on the 20th. Okay, not playing with you at all, folks. This is it. It's out there. Okay, so whether it moves back or not, and that's over there. Uh, Mars will be over here somewhere. Not sure which one of these is, but more either that or Mars is in the hole. Mi that might be Mars right there. Mars is in the well with the sun right there in that shot, more than likely somewhere. Okay? Not playing with you at all. Okay? I'll even knock this down so you can see that it's... There you go. I'm set you, okay? Okay, this is our most interesting one, and then so we'll blow in on that right away. There's up 400%. And you'll also see our object. Okay, there's there's what it is. It's right there. And that basically with that, those terahydrons and running around, and then basically that's what when you see some of the Soho shots, what they blocked out that's lower on the sun. They don't want you to know it's getting that close to Earth, okay? Jupiter's are at our back door and there is Lovejoy looks humongous going through space, okay? Now, these are planets and objects, a cluster out there, folks. So, as you see, it makes us feel better that it's farther away. It's got some, and there's Mars in the hole, and more than likely that is Mars. I'm not positive, but it's in the hole. Mars is marked there somewhere in the hole, in the well, with uh, the sun. Okay? So, then we've got this seahorse action up there. Uh, we have got a lot of interesting clusters out here in the asteroids belt, folks. So, we have an asteroid belt around us, ladies and gentlemen, and the supergiants, okay? So, it's starting to bleed out. And then, idea you got to remember the size of these things compared to Jupiter, folks. We know Jupiter is humongous, right? Way hella larger than the sun and so forth. So, that's the thing is deceptive, too. When they block out the sun all the time, okay, we've seen what size this is, and we see the Jupiter, okay? Starting to wonder on these sizes that they have for us, Okay? Now, Jupiter is way larger than Earth. Actually, I think Earth's putting off a, l a pretty brightness there because the su the basically the supergiants and the sun are putting a pretty good action on it because basically the sun should be the farthest away it's going to be from us right now, but it's at an all-time recorded history, getting close to the all-time recorded history closeness because it's going to the supergiants and we are following it and it's in the, supposed to be in the winter solstice farther away from us right now. The sun should be the farthest away. Well, it is the farthest away it can be to, from us right now, okay? But the sun is in the well somewhere in there, okay, blocked out so that you can get all this other footage. Otherwise, you can't see these other objects, okay? And the one we're really wondering about is that, so let's blow it into that at 1,000 and see what that looks like. So there it is, blown into 1,000. And basically, that's Earth right there to the right, okay? That's Earth. So it's time for NASA and them to start bleeding out and tell us what the heck is that part of the asteroid belt and what the hell it is, okay? It looks like the big brick, as you can see, the big brick that we've seen in all the Soho shots before, and like, what the hell is that? So it's moving pretty darn fast, and I'm just going down here to show you that I'm not messing with you at all, and this is Sechi H12A, okay? It's exactly what it is, and here I go. I'll go up from here, and you'll see Jupiter. There was Lovejoy to the right, so I'll take you and give you another good shot of Jupiter and Lovejoy down here. 
and we're at a thousand percent so there you got lovejoy leaving so oh or the this is h12 a and then the idea that it may be i believe in h h1 i think it'll be there for a while or basically they say it's going to be here for a while but I, I think it's moving so fast that they were wrong on that i read some information that said it would be in h1 and i think it would be here too because i think this is as far out and back you can get i think not positive or actually i'm wrong on that i think it's going to be the red shots the red shots will be the ones that would be the longest we'll be able to see it okay so let's go to that red shot and let's just go up and basically get you off from Mars somewhere in there and probably the one in the hole in the well and then get you over to that and check that out so we are in the big bang ladies and gentlemen big bangs of whatever or everything branding each other and there is very unique pattern around this one of orbitals and there are other planets basically because you can see the glow that's not a dead planet like the moon it's not our moon okay very interesting so here's a recent shot from and that's this is the one that you'll probably see, it'll be a, we'll keep on being able to see it the longest okay on the 20th and as you can see everything looks closer together and so forth and so on so and you need to realize that we are very close to the sun and it's I don't know about picking it out picking us out of there and stuff like that but if you think of that triangulation that we've seen in the other shots and we can still see Lovejoy ourselves too and we you know the Sun and the supergiants glow down on us every day which is this here it's not more than just the Sun so with that triangulation that we just seen in the other shot the earth is somewhere in here triangulated with Venus and Lovejoy going away because Lovejoy is basically that's the head going away coming out this way towards deep dark space when it'll loop back around the Sun again and uh, basically we are still somewhat because the idea of uh, Lovejoy is going to be the closest to Earth again in January. So if you go to that diagram that I showed you in the other videos, you bring up that, or just go to JPL and get that number that I gave you for Lovejoy, what it is, and it'll go to Space uh, Weather, and they'll have it, I think, somewhere. But watch my old videos and, and write it down, and this is going to loop back, but it's going to be close to us. So Earth is somewhere in here, and then H1... High 1B is very, very way far out. It gives us very deep space shot. And this will give you some pretty weird perspectives here, but there is Lovejoy and Venus. So the idea, like I say, Earth is somewhere in here. I mean, that could be us right there. That could be Earth right there, possibly. I'm not sure. Because we're a lot smaller than that. When you think about what they always tell us, size of Venus and Earth, that probably could be it. But then we could be a little speck out here, too. But we wouldn't be one of the ones moving along. So it could be that there. But you think we'd see our magnetism coming off of that too. So, I mean, maybe we are up here. Maybe we are up high. Maybe we're one of these up here. Maybe Earth is one like this or this. But the idea, we do know that we see this stuff out the back door of us. Earth, that could be that group that we see then. Uh, when it's looking from way out high. And then, you know, so we're starting to guess here. But the idea that you do see the magnetism strings there on that and that. And we know that we're small, so the idea that could be us somewhere there. Either that or we're maybe up here in the darkness, so maybe that's us up way up there. They don't show us on the marking on this one. So Earth is somewhere with it where that we get a view, and there's two magnetical strings, so you follow those magnetical strings up. It's like either something here, there, or there. So take your pick. Earth's got to be somewhere in that shot because we know we can see Lovejoy as it moves away and we know we can see Venus out the back door because Venus is out our back door right now in the darkness with uh, massive objects that are supposed to be up here somewhere from Neptune and so forth and so on I think so I'm just going to slide down this since I got it zoomed in already for time on the movie and there you go Jupiter Mars H1A and there's Lovejoy and Mercury so it's kind of the tail on Lovejoy is very deceptive because basically that's moving out, that's going forward in space. So we're learning a lot from watching Lovejoy. Maybe harness some secrets of space travel. And there's an interesting shot too because there's the sun and the supergiants spread out very. I probably have more videos later.